the race to lead the Democratic National Committee is on. We're joined now by someone who has thrown his hat in the ring to be the chair of the National Party, the South Carolina Democratic Party chair, Jamie Harrison. He joins us now from the great city of Columbia, South Carolina. Mr. Chairman, thank you for joining us again. Nice to Thanks have you back Thanks for having on. me. Thank um, you. Tell us why Hillary Clinton lost the presidential election. Well, she won the popular vote, but she lost with the Electoral College. And, and a lot of that has to do with that this whole election was about people wanting to feel like they mattered. Uh, you had uh, African Americans who've been saying for the past two years that Black Lives Matter. You had young people, uh, even Bernie Democrats, saying that their voices were not, uh, did not matter in the Democratic Party. Uh, and I think you had rural working uh, class folks saying, you know, Donald Trump is speaking to us because we do matter. And so, in essence, I think the Democratic Party has to get back to making sure that people, one, understand that we're listening to them, and two, that we appreciate them and know that they do matter. And, and that's where the fight is about the future of the Democratic Whose Party. Whose fault is that that didn't happen in this election? I don't know if there's one individual that, that's fault. I think this has been uh, simmering a long time, partly because I think our, our, our state parties have not gotten the love uh, and the support that they so desperately <laughs> need. I mean, the, the, front line, the front line of having a strong party is, is the, the grassroots level, and that's state parties. And so we really have to, once again, invest in state parties. I, I know here in South Carolina, the only way that we break through is if we have a national partner that can help us uh, and provide us the resources, the, the talent and know-how that they have in Washington, D.C., and we got the muscle down here in South Carolina. But you have to have that, that partnership. Jamie, a, a large part of the Democratic electorate, uh, particularly the part that was in favor of Bernie Sanders in the Democratic nomination fight, looks at the WikiLeaks emails and other pieces of evidence and says the DNC is corrupt, was corrupt in this last cycle, and rigged the entire process to give Hillary Clinton the nomination and to screw Bernie Sanders. Do you agree with that? No, I, listen, I, I think there was uh, a, a lot of long-time relationships that people had with the Clinton administration and and probably was too close. I mean, listen, I even had a friendly relationship uh, with a lot of folks on the Clinton campaign, but I also had a lot of friends on the Bernie Sanders campaign as well. Uh, even some of my staff was there. And so one of the things that we have to do is we have to make people trust the system again. We have to make them trust the party again. And the only way that we do that is by showing them, and all of these people are on the grassroots level, show them that we respect them, show that, that we're going to invest in them. And I think that's how you get them to, to once again come back to the party. Jamie, if you became the chair of the party, what would you do? I mean, in a concrete way, what would you do to reassure the parts of the party right now that, again, feel like the DNC has been stacked against them? Um, what would you do to make them, to make them believe that the DNC was playing, uh, was playing fair going forward? Well, I, you know, the, the one thing is, in, and, and the operative word is going forward. <laughs> you can't go back and clean up the, whatever happened at, at that that time. So all you can do is tell people, look at what we're going to do and, and, and work with us in order to build that. You be a part of this. So for a few things. One, I think that, you know, young people want to make sure their voices are heard. And right now, instead of just making the, co the, the copies and picking up coffee, they want to have a, a seat at the table. I think we need to add a millennial chair or what we have here in South Carolina is one of our vice chairs is under the age of 35. I think the DNC needs to add that voice to the table so that young people have a seat. Uh, I think there, there are things that we have to do with our state party, what, what I call the 50 states plus. We have to amp up and increase the amount of money that we're giving to state parties so that they can become the innovation centers for all the things that we can do uh, on campaigns. Uh, you know, we have a fellowship here in South Carolina where we built this bench of talent, and we call it the, the Jim Clyburn Political Fellowship, where we train one young person from every county in the state of South Carolina with the goal by 2020 of having 250 young people across the state trained to run for office, run our county party operations, or be political operatives. Those are the types of things that I think if we did them in the states, we can strengthen that so that it doesn't matter if you have a charismatic leader like Barack Obama who's running for president or a policy wonk like Hillary Clinton. You can still touch the people and get the vote out. Mr. Chairman, there's some people who are formally in the race like you. There's others who are alleged, said to be thinking about it. Handicap the race. Who's the front runner for chair right now? 
Well, right now, this is the thing. Whomever's the next chair has to be a full-time chair, 24-7, dedicated to running uh, the DNC and working with All right, 50 I know, states. I know, you got 50 I know you states, think, six I know you and others think that, but who's, who's the front runner? Are you well, the front runner? I don't know if there the front is a runner? front runner. The wide open? I, I don't know. I, I think it's wide open. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's a front runner right now because people, many of the members that I'm talking to said, listen, we're trying to listen to everybody. We want to see what the, the, who's going to be in the race, and then we'll make a determination from that point. Well, so what I'm telling people is you, oh, go ahead. Correct. Sorry. Will, will Debbie Wasserman Schultz go down in history as a good chair, great chair, bad chair? I mean, there were very positive aspects of, of, of Debbie's uh, chairmanship, and then there were things that didn't work well. Like what? And so, what's uh, in the second you know, category? I, I don't. Well, I mean, do I need to say what's in the second category? I mean, the, the fact that you, you have a lot of people who are, are upset um, with, with the DNC. And so, listen, Debbie was very helpful here in South Carolina anytime we needed, but there, there's, there's a lot of folks who didn't feel that way. And so, uh, you know, I consider Debbie a good friend, and, and I know she tried, but in the end, we have to move on from that and to build the, the next generation of the DNC. Mr. Chair, we only got, Mr. Chairman, we only have a few seconds left, but just to answer this question, uh, the importance of the party right now is to, is to focus on the base and building up the base, or to try to uh, focus more on the center of the electorate. What, where's the future for the Democratic Party in that, re in that regard? Oh, you win elections by addition and not subtraction. And so that's uh, all of the approach. That's base, that's, but uh, that's also reaching out to, to, to working class people in rural America where we've lost uh, over the past few, uh, few years. And so, again, it's addition, not subtraction. And I think Donald Trump is going to disappoint a lot of people who voted for him this time around, and we're going to be able to add those people yeah. in the 2018 race.